Hello again, my name's John, I'm a retired chef from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to another bread video. In this one I'll be making this old English classic called a bloomer and you'll be pleased to hear it's very easy to make. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on my website. I'll leave links at the end and under the video or just click on the eye icon top right of the screen. Before I go any further, I'd like to give a quick shout out to this week's Patreon and PayPal donators. And they are Rodrigo and Isabel, Bad Wabbit, Robert Maniki, Tim Branyan, Roland Milliard, Vincent Smith, Tuomo Pacola, Linda Thompson, Nathan Harris and Jack Cohanham. Thanks very much everyone, it really does help the channel. Right, I'll begin by weighing off all of the ingredients. There's only five in total. Starting with 500 grams, that's 17 and a half ounces of strong white bread flour. Next is 310 grams, that's 11 ounces of room temperature water. I always weigh all of the ingredients, including the water. Doing it this way, there's no chance of getting your measurements wrong. For this recipe, use 7 grams or 2 teaspoons of active or instant dried yeast. If you're using fresh yeast, you'll need 20 grams, that's 3 quarters of an ounce. You'll also need 8 grams, that's 1 level teaspoon of salt. And the final ingredient is 45 grams, that's 1 and a half ounces or 3 tablespoons of olive oil. Don't forget you can view the ingredients list and full written method on the website. There's plenty of links to get you there. Now in this video I'll be using my stand mixer. But if you don't have one or you simply want to do this recipe by hand, check out my cottage loaf video on how to knead bread dough tips and techniques. There'll be a link in the description box to get you there. Or you can just click the eye icon top right of the screen. Right, to get started, mix the salt and the dried yeast in with the flour in a separate bowl. And to save time, I've already done a test on this batch of yeast and it's fine. Make sure your yeast is alive and well before starting the recipe. Ok, add the water and oil to the mixer bowl and attach the door hook. Now to save the flour from flying all over the place I'll be adding it a little at a time and FYI I'm on the slower speed on my KitchenAid mixer which is number one on this machine. Once all the ingredients have come together in the mixing bowl, set your timer for 10 minutes. If you're kneading yours by hand, you'll also have to knead it for 10 minutes too. While the dough is mixing, add half a teaspoon of vegetable or olive oil and grease the inside of a bowl as shown. This is simply so the dough will release easier after its first rise. Once the 10 minutes are up, the dough should be very smooth and slightly sticky. Now scrape it out onto the bench and knead it for a few seconds, then form it into a ball. It should actually feel quite pleasant. It should be soft, smooth and easy to work. Now 
place the dough ball into the bowl and coat it with a little oil as shown. Cover it and set your timer for one hour. Now this time may vary depending on the temperature of your kitchen. To give you an idea, my kitchen, according to my thermometer on the scales, is reading 22.5 degrees Celsius. That's around 72 to 73 Fahrenheit. And while the first rise is underway, I'll grease a baking tray that the bread will be baked on. And the dimensions of my tray are on screen. I'm using a little lard to do mine, but you can use oil, butter or shortening. Once the time's up, your dough should have at least doubled in size. If yours isn't there yet, just give it more time. Now sprinkle some flour on the bench, not too much. And turn out the dough onto the flour. It should release easily from the oiled bowl. Now sprinkle a little flour on the dough and knock it back as shown. Once all the gas is out, form the dough into an oval shape like mine. Clean up the excess flour from the bench and carefully place the dough in the centre of the tray. Sprinkle a little more flour on the dough. And cover it with a lightweight dry cloth. Try not to use a heavy towel material or the weight will prevent the dough from rising upwards. Now here's a little tip. The longer the bread dough takes to rise, the tastier the finished bread will be. It's not all about forcing your dough to rise as quickly as possible. When there's only about 15 minutes left on the final rise, I preheat the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, that's 392 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 6. I'm setting mine to 180 Celsius because my oven's fan assisted and it runs about 20 degrees hotter than indicated on the dial. And to give this bloomer a crispy crust, place a pan of hot water on the bottom shelf of the oven and to make it even crispier, you'll also need a spray bottle of water handy. Right, once the time's up, your dough should have risen quite a lot, just like mine has. Now, sprinkle a little more flour on the top of the loaf. This makes it a little easier to score and gives the finished bread a more professional look. OK, using a very sharp knife or razor blade, score the dough a few times. I'm using this curved blade called a French Baker's Lame and they work very well. I like to use four scores on mine, but it's up to you how many you do. It just allows the bread to expand a little in the oven, but it's mainly for aesthetic reasons. Right, get it straight into the preheated oven. Open the door slowly to prevent a blast of steam. Get it in and give the inside of the oven a quick spray with the water. And set your timer for at least 30 minutes. If you prefer a harder crust, give it 40 to 45 minutes. As my oven tends to heat up more on one side for some reason, I like to turn mine around about two thirds of the way through. But you may not have to do this at all. And it's looking good already. Mm. 
Right, once the time's up, get it out and onto a wire rack and let it cool, if you can, for about 30 minutes. And doesn't that look amazing? Right, it's been about 20 minutes because I can't wait any longer. So I'll cut a couple of slices off and let you see what it's like on the inside. And as you can hear, the crust is nice and crispy and the inside is wonderfully soft and light. Okay, I'll try a piece with some of my homemade butter on. And I really wish you could smell my kitchen at the moment. It's absolutely divine. And honestly, that is absolutely delicious and so simple to make, as you'll discover if you give it a try. Well, this one definitely gets a thumbs up. And once again, please help support the channel by joining my Patreon appeal for as little as $2 per month, or make a one-off donation via my PayPal page. It really will help keep the channel going. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.